How can properties of operations be used to subtract expressions? Think about this question during the lesson. Lita's family wants to put a tiled border around their swimming pool. What expression represents the total area of the border? Begin by asking yourself, how can you use subtraction to find the area of the tiled border? Lita made a simpler diagram of the pool. To find the area of the tiled border, we can find the area of everything and then subtract the area of the pool, which will leave us with the area of only the border. That's what we need to find. Begin by writing an expression for the area of the pool only, which is its width times its length. The width of the pool is 14 feet. The length of the pool is 2 times x plus 14 feet. Remember, your answer will be in square feet. Now, let's write an expression for the area of the pool plus the tile border. It's still width times length, but the dimensions are different. What is the length of the tile border? Select your answer. You're looking for the dimensions of the pool and tile border. The tile border is two feet wide all the way around the pool. So the total length is 2 plus 2 times x plus 14 plus 2 more, which is 2 times x plus 18. Now, what's the width, including the tile border? The width with tile border is 2 plus 14 plus 2, or 18 feet. The area of the pool and tiled border is 18 times the quantity 2 times x plus 18 square feet. The area of the tiled border is the difference of the two expressions. We need to use properties of operations to subtract the expressions and simplify the result. Rewrite the expression. First, use the distributive property. Then, use the commutative property. Now, simplify the expression. The area of the tiled border is 8 times x plus 128 square feet. A frame holds a picture that is 15 inches long and X inches wide. The frame border is 3 inches wide around the picture. What expression represents the area of the frame border? They tell us the area of frame border is equal to area of entire frame minus the area of the photo. So let's write this out using our numbers. So the picture <clears throat> holds 15 inches long, x inches wide, and I'm just going to draw a picture frame. Okay, so it's 15 inches long and x inches wide. Um, the frame border, okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna, <clears throat> gonna draw in a different color the border on the outside here. 
because that's the border. So the border has a frame that is three inches wide around <clears throat> the picture. What expression represents the area? So actually, let me reposition this to show that that's the width. That's three inches wide. So from here, from here to here, it's three inches wide. So then now we take a look at writing out this expression. So area of the frame, the entire frame minus the area of the photo. So let me go back to purple. The area of the photo, um, we know the area is length times width, so 15 times x will give us the area of the photo. The area of the entire frame would be, <coughs> excuse me, would be the 15 We have 15, let me use the blue. We have the 15 and just a reminder, it is also three feet this way as well as that um, horizontally. So the um, length of this frame would be 15 plus the three feet that accounts for the width plus three feet because it would be three feet this way and this way. So we have to account for that um, space there. So that's just um, the length and then the width of the frame. Um, would be X because it told us here they don't know the width here um, of the frame so that means we don't know the entire width of the frame itself so that would be uh, let me write that in purple that would be X <clears throat> X plus 3 plus 3 because again um, from here to here is three and also here. So we have to account for that as well because we're now talking about the frame. So that's around it. So now we have to combine <clears throat> both of these together. So that we can, um, simplify this. So we have to combine both of those together. So now um, for the length part of it, we have 15 plus 3 plus 3. So that's 15 and 6 and that will give us 21. And then x plus 3 plus 3 will give us x plus 6. And then we're adding that together. And so 21 plus, um, I'm sorry, not a plus, my apologies. We are multiplying because it's length times width. So we are, just so we're clear, let me go back. The blue represents the length of the frame. The purple represents the width of the frame. And so area, as we said here, is length times width. So we had to multiply those two measurements together. And so now um, this would be 21 times x plus 6, which can also be written as 21 parentheses or the quantity of x plus 6. 6 and then we have um, to write that here so 
in this blank first blank space 21 times x plus 6 and then we're subtracting that frame expression from the um, area of the front of the picture itself so the picture itself excuse me the picture itself was the 15 times x and so now we take the two and I'm just going to erase this part to give me some space to write more okay now we have to um, combine the like terms and so we have we're going to use the distributive property here so 21 times um, x is 21 times x and then 21 times um, 6 will give me 126 and then minus the 15 X and then we're going to combine the 21 and the 15 X because they are like terms and 21 minus 15 gives us 6 so we now have 6 X plus 126 inches squared that is the final expression that we would use to solve for the area of the frame border and that is it jada is comparing membership costs for two gyms what is the difference in membership costs after M months if she joins B Strong instead of Zippy Health Club? Write an expression for each membership cost for M months and subtract them. So as you can see, they have for B Strong is $24.99. So you get that directly from this picture on the side each month minus the $10 off the first month. So that's why they are subtracting. And then Zippy's is $49.95 to join and then $19.95 each month. So there's their expression. Then um, to see which one or the difference in the cost of both of them, that's why there's a subtraction in between the two. And so we now um, are combining them together. So um, the 24 and 99 cents a month combines with the 19.95 and the uh, ten dollars and the forty nine ninety five combined, and then you have um fifty. Uh, sorry, uh five dollars and four cents a month minus the fifty nine ninety five to sign up, and so Jada will pay five dollars and four cents more each month to be at um, be strong but we'll start with an, an initial savings of fifty nine dollars and ninety five cents subtract the quantity ninety five hundredths times x minus four hundredths minus the quantity of 99 hundredths times x minus 13 hundredths. Okay.
first thing you do is see if you have any terms that are alike to um, combine and subtract these. So we have the 95x and the 99 cents times x. So we're going to um, combine those. And um, we have this uh, minus uh, 99x and a minus on the inside. So you can almost, because it's in parentheses, you can say there's a negative 1 on the outside here, an invisible negative 1. And that is what is being distributed to each of the numbers on the inside. So the 99 cents times x will be negative, and the 13 cents will actually turn into a positive. I'm just going to use a different color. That will end up being positive. So let's combine these terms. So 95 and 99. Um, the 99x would be uh, greater than the 95. So our answer will be negative because it is also negative. So we have minus for um, cents times x and then we have <clears throat> the zero and four hundredths plus thirteen hundredths so we have um, and that's a negative zero and four hundredths so 13 is greater, so my answer is going to be positive. So um, 13 hundredths minus the 4 hundredths, and we get 9 hundredths. And so we have nothing else to combine, so that is, that is all. Subtract the expressions. The quantity 5 times j minus 2 times q plus 2 fifths minus the quantity 4 minus 3 times j minus 1 half times q. Let's see. They have combined the like terms. And then simplify the expression. Wanted to point out again about um, because there's a minus outside of these groupings, they had to distribute the negative. So um, this negative, invisible negative one, is multiplied times the um, four the 3j and this so that becomes a negative as you can see it becomes a negative 4 it becomes a positive 3j and it, the negative 1 half becomes a positive 1 half q because that negative is distributed throughout and a negative and negative is a positive so just wanted to point that out again um, and so then they combine like terms after that, and they simplified and got a final answer. Um, and that's it. They got that final expression. Let's do one. Subtract. The quantity 17 plus 4 and 5 tenths minus m plus 8 times k minus the quantity of 7 and 5 tenths times m minus 9 plus 4 times k. Okay, so let's subtract. 
Um, first, I'm going to show you like I did before, because that's minus, this is going to be distributed. It's going to be an invisible negative 1 that is being distributed to each of the numbers inside of this parentheses. So now we have, and I'm just going to rewrite this side of the um, expression. So we now have negative 7 and 5 tenths m and the negative and the negative 9 will be a positive 9 and the negative and the 4k will be negative 4k so now we have taken that negative and distributed through them all we can combine the like terms so we have neg uh, negative 7 and 5 tenths and 4 and 5 tenths we can combine them the negative 7 and 5 tenths has a greater absolute value so my um, answer is going to be negative, so that's going to equal uh, 3. So I have negative 3 times m. Then next we have uh, 8k and negative 4k. Uh, the 8's positive, uh, absolute value is greater than the negative 4, so answer is going to be positive. And so 8 minus 4 is 4, and then keep our k. And then finally, we have 17 and 9. And then 17 plus the 9 will give us 26. And we have nothing else to simplify. And that's it.